Then Roger and I moved to the other side of town, but we um, we went down there every weekend and picked him up, and he came and spent the weekend with us. And uh, after three years, he decided he was going to move in full time, which he did. And um, then um, he lived with us for two years. Um, Miguel had died by the time he moved in full time. And I write a lot in the story, I think, about how Paco had identified with Miguel. And it was sort of like, um, I don't know, I think he was sort of like trying to find out what Roger and I would do with him based on what we did with Miguel. And um, when Miguel died, that was when I got a little more uh, on board with accepting the fact that for some reason this child was in my life and I was going to do what needed to be done. So when he moved in, he lived with us for two years full time. And then after that, he was in and out, uh, depending how his life went. And um, that's still how it is. He's still in and out. Uh, when he was 19, um, and he was living with us for a while then, and he met, there's a little girl that I begin and end the story with called Princess. Uh, he met her mother, and uh, Princess is the result. So should I read? <laughs> Every Monday through Friday, I take an eight-year-old girl who likes to be called Princess to school. At 3 o'clock, I pick her up and we go to violin or piano lessons, math tutoring, soccer, or basketball practice. On weekends, I watch her play sports. In between these activities, we hang out. I garden and she digs for worms or hunts insects. We color drawings and books using crayons and colored pencils. We practice our violins and do homework. Sometimes, Princess helps me cook. My days are like those of any mother, aunt, or grandmother with an eight-year-old in her life. I, however, am 60 and never wanted or had children of my own. I am not bound to princess by blood or a legal relationship. Sometimes she calls me her fairy grandmother. I gain this title by cooperating with a big black Newfoundland Labrador retriever and a needy eight-year-old boy I will call Paco. And then, at the very end, <coughs> this kind of will bring you up to date. A Sunday soccer game. The most striking difference between Paco at eight years of age and his daughter Princess, who is that age now, is that Princess is blessed with a mother who has nurtured her in every way. One Sunday afternoon, I took Princess to her soccer game. Many people were watching the games. As soon as she and I neared the soccer field, I noticed a noose sitting with his people. He was huge, even for the breed. I stopped and talked to the dog before moving on to where Princess and her team waited to play. In a while, Paco joined me to watch his daughter. Back in my house, he immediately asked, Hey Rosie, did you see the noose? Before I could answer, Princess said, Yeah, Rose stopped to pet the dog. She talked to him too. I was afraid she'd be late for my game. Paco smiled. I thought to myself, there is no way Princess could begin to imagine what her dad remembers when he sees a noof. He wouldn't understand that a noof reminds her dad of a time when he watched an apparently healthy, happy dog interact with two grown-ups and envied the dog. <coughs> Excuse me. As time passed, I grew to like the idea that I became a person who made a firm commitment to a child who needed me and helped him grow up strong and happy with his life. I'm proud of the part I played in helping Princess to live an ordinary life with none of the experiences that her father barely survived. I'm sure Paco would join me wholeheartedly in saying, thank you, Miguel, for beginning this long, many-chaptered story.